So I got a call from a guy about a dory. He really wants a Grand Bank story. And I had the conversation with him that Grand Bank stories are beautiful things if you want a boat filled with the gills with cod and you want to stack it on, stack a bunch of them on deck, nested together. But as a recreational boat, they're just not that great. You know, they're kind of cranky, they're kind of heavy. Half the time you gotta roll them standing up if they're built particularly deep. I could not change this guy's mind. At the same time, I'm really interested in them. Just never built one. It'd be fun to build one. I hate to go to my grave without having built it. So for no other reason, I kind of inclined to just take a crack at doing something. Anyhow, I thought I'm just going to draw one up. One inch to the foot. One's at 12 feet long too, that's real short. It's as short as you get for Dory. What you see me doing here is creating a grid. It's the first step in producing any kind of lofting. It's really just a framework upon which you do your design or your drawing. It involves a baseline, perpendicular lines, and center lines. first line I'm laying down here is the bottom, and I'm determining how much rocker I'm putting into it. Rocker is the difference in depth between the extreme ends of that bottom and the midships point. Boats with a lot of rocker turn more easily and can handle rough water better, but then again they don't track as straight and they're not quite as fast. I should just use the sweeps to do this fast. This is a quick and dirty. This is a quick and dirty. Let's see how it looks. What I'm about to use is called a ship sweep. It's basically a French curve, but it's a lot longer and flatter. What I'm creating here is really what I would call an ideation drawing. I'm not too worried about all the little details, I'm just trying to get a general impression of what this boat might look like. To a certain degree, I'm just designing on the fly here. Before starting drawing, I did actually look at a bunch of different reference materials. I went through the various design books I have and pulled out pictures of dories, went on the internet and looked for some other references there. And what I came down to is basically a set of proportions that I think might work for a dory this size. In short, I'm not copying anybody's specific design. I decided this 12 foot boat would be about 4 feet wide and would have a bottom width of just a little over two feet and a length of just a little over nine feet. I wanted the bottom a little bit wider, but I could only go so far and not lose the classic dory flare-sided proportions. I'm gonna give it eight inches of the shear. Use the spline for this one. Here I'm laying down the shear line. Now I used the ship sweep to do the bottom because there is not a lot of shape in that particular line. But, and I could use the ship sweep for the shear line too, but I find that uh, you spend more time juggling these sweeps around trying to find just the right curve when I can do the same job with a flexible batten much more quickly. I also believe I'm going to get a smoother, more fair curve using the flexible batten rather than the ship sweep. My basic process for using the flexible batten is always about the same. I'll start in the middle usually and isolate one particular point that I want to use, I'll go to the ends of the line that I want to create and uh, isolate those points, and then I'll start to fill in the blanks in between with more weights, tweaking the curve as I go. Now this is kind of a quick little ideation drawing, I didn't put a ton of work into uh, laying down this curve, but on a larger boat, on a larger drawing, I would probably put a lot more weights there and spend a little bit more time tweaking it. I've got this Chappelle drawing, I really like, really like the lines on it, so I'm going to drop it. I am using one design that Howard Chappelle recorded uh, from a dory that was from the 1880s, and I just really like the way it looks, so 
I'm stealing a little bit of stuff off of that, really just like the transom rake, the transom proportions, and the shape of the stem, and that's about it. I'm also taking there. some proportions of the plank widths off of it because I find they look really appealing to me. But for the most part, that dory and my dory are not going to look exactly the same, and uh, the sizes of them are completely different. Picasso said, good artists copy. Great artists steal. Just approximate. So much of the character of the boat is just in the shape of the stem. And uh, the shape of a stem on a dory can be practically a straight line or it can be a curve with a lot of shape to the bottom or a lot of shape to the top depending on the style of boat. And um, <clears throat> it's amazing how much time you can spend just farting around with this. And I've spent quite a bit of time drawing it and redrawing it and trying it different ways before I finally found one that I think appeals to me. Finding that just the right shape. Dories are kind of just a little bit of a flat section. Just to the stem head. I don't know why. It's the way I feel. There we go. That. That's good. Now as I work through this design process, I'm finding dividers are really my most useful tool. I'm using them to try and record proportions off of this other drawing. What you see me trying to figure out here is the proportion of the top side planking to the rest of the boat. I'm trying to scale off how far down the transom and how far down the stem the planking starts and stops. Once I've got a good line showing the, the overall size of the planking, then I'll draw that in and then try and divide it up into smaller planks and see how those look. Sure you bring your carrier lines through. That's why you gotta have those guys at the outside. So we're doing ones in the middle. Try and get a nice looking spring going. When you're creating a plank line, it's really important to spring the ends of your batten out beyond the end of the line that you're trying to draw. If you don't do that, you end up with sort of flat spots towards the end of the line. It doesn't look natural. You can go too far with this, of course, but it's important to just try and do it at least a very little bit. Now, the flatter the line you're trying to draw, often you need more weights to hold that batten down nice and firm. Otherwise, there's not enough spring in it to stiffen it up. What I'm doing right now is I'm basically walking down the top sides, adding one plank after the other, trying to eyeball a good shape and a good size. It's pretty common to just wait until you're building the boat to do this, but I'm just trying to create a nice sort of pretty picture, if you will, of what this boat might look like to show this potential client. Remember what I said about stem shape? Here I go again. I think I might have to just knock this out in wood. Have a look at it. All right, so now that I've got my profile drawing done, I'm just moving on to the half breadths, trying to get an idea as to what this boat's going to look like from above or a bird's eye view, if you will. Now we call this view half breadths because it's showing the full breadth of the boat but uh, from the center line out, so really half the breadth of the boat. We also refer to these lines as water lines generally. But in this case, I'm just doing the shear line and the uh, chine or the bottom. Now part of this process uh, means that you're starting to play around with something we refer to as the length to beam ratio. Now uh, the 
narrower your boat is relative to the length, the faster it's going to go. The longer your boat is, the faster it's going to go. And um, a typical small boat might have a length to beam ratio of about um, 3 to 1, for instance, say a small dinghy or rowboat. Now a canoe probably has a ratio of about 5 to 1, and uh, a racing shell might have a ratio of more like 13 or 15 to 1. So this boat uh, is the length of the length to beam ratio is about uh, three to one at the shear, but down at the bottom it's actually more closer to five to one because the bottom's only two feet wide, so there's a lot of flare. We're going to end up with a ratio that's a little closer to a canoe, and thus the boat should be a little bit on the should be relatively fast. Now, of course, it'll be terrible for sailing because sailing craft generally want a nice uh, wide bottom relative to the length. But for a rowing boat like this is going to be, it should be fairly satisfactory. Once we've finished our half breadth view, we can move on to what we call the body plan. Now this third view is basically a view of the boat from the front and the back end. And everything we create in this view is determined by elements we've already laid down in the other two views. My favorite way to do this is just with a recipe card. What I'm doing here is I'm using a recipe card in order to record heights and widths from the other two views and then carrying them into the body plan. By using this method it means that all the dimensions we've created in the other two views are accurately transcribed to the plan view. The bulk of this job is really just transferring a few dimensions and then connecting the dots, especially so in the case of a flat bottomed and flare sided boat. It's really pretty straightforward. With our ideation design done, we can move on to making a model and see how this looks in 3D. But we'll save that for the next video. Remember what you've just seen is exclusive to my Patreon supporters. If you have any friends you think might be interested, please uh, let them know. Thanks for watching and thank you very much for your support. If you have any questions, I'm all ears and I'm open to suggestions anytime. Ciao for now, folks.